Welcome back to a new session of Might and Magic World of Zine. Glad to have you. This session is going to cover uh, the Red Dwarf Mines. This particular video is going to have a dip into River City to grab Swimming for Pork and Beans and Arms Master for the party. I'm then going to portal back here to Vertigo. I did not handle spell purchasing off camera. I will do that now for this episode. I'm then going to head to Witch Tower, visit the skulls that I left behind by accident last episode, and then we'll get into the mines. The mines are a starter dungeon. They are quite lengthy. I expect it will have me doing multiple videos of roughly a half hour to get through those. Party three level eights, three level sevens. We've got plenty of power in us. Let's get this party started, shall we? So, using our convenient handy dandy Clouds of Zine map, Where to? we'll know that River City is a possible location. We're going to portal right there. Now, we are already starting with a hostile here. That is an insane beggar, a living creature. They deal very little damage, but if they hit you and deal damage, they can inflict the insane condition upon you. Uh, in s conditions in these older Might and Magic games, I should speak particularly for World of Zine compared to Might and Magic 6, 7, and 8, they start off small and then they accelerate until you have at least one attribute in at zero. And at that point, you are risking your character death, much as Tiny Shopkeeper was last episode. Now, do I remember where the Arns Master is? Somewhere in this vicinity. Yes. Uh, this is just a targeted dive for swimming and for the skill. Though I do believe this party could clear out most of River City. I want to stay away from doing so. We have other objectives to accomplish. We don't have a full roster of ranged weapons. I did see one of the blacksmith last episode, I do believe, and then promptly didn't pick it up. I think it's this one. Martial training. Fighting is simple. I'll teach you to be an arms master in one easy lesson for 300 gold. So this provides a to hit bonus for our characters using weapons, and all of us are using weapons, and I'm willing to spend the 1800 gold to make this happen. Fight. All right, cool. Day 34, huzzah. We take a look at the characters. We have the Arms Master skill alongside Crusader. We have a Swimmer in there and three of them, well, no, that's gonna be an award. Tiny Shop has Thievery. All right, that feels good. A bodybuilding is going to be next to us, but that costs 1,000 per. And that's just not the kind of budget we're operating with right now. 5,287, we couldn't get that for everyone. Uh, bodybuilding provides one extra hit point per level. If memory serves, which is... We can better spend the money elsewhere right now. That's a temp job building. You can spend a 10 day working for 100 gold, which that's a 10 day. You know, it's a full week. That's, there's so many other things you could do to get that money. There's the magic mirror we're walking past. How you doing? Glad we outsped you. Did not intend to engage in melee, but I did. This should be the ferryman offering to take us to a, like a point, like off the coast. Uh, which you could then, like, access to sail here to River City. We don't need that, though. I can teach you how to swim for a mere 100 gold. I remember that being more expensive. I accept. All right, 100 gold and pork and beans is now no different than any other human. Perfectly Cable is swimming. Has more health, sure. So be it. As a note, and this will be more relevant as we get into the Red Dwarf Mines, um, there are diminishing returns and increasing attributes. Uh, 21 is your, uh, 
your best point for value in which like every odd you're getting value and then once you get to 21 it goes like 25 and then 30 and i think that goes up to 250 in this game once you get an attribute at 250 there's no further point increasing it that of course is you know tapping into my frayed memory it has been decades since i have played this game directly vertigo please we could portal back to the witch tower from here but i want to access the mages guild it's time to make some choices welcome to the guild thank you we're picking up wizard eye Wizard Eye gives the party a bird's eye view of their surroundings. The view will appear in the upper right corner of the game screen. Do you wish to purchase Wizard Eye for 1,000 gold? There are a number of secret tunnels in the Red Dwarf Mines, and I think there is a skill trainer for detecting secret doors uh, a ways west of Vertigo, but I don't remember the exact location, and it should not be necessary with Wizard Eye. Enjoy. I will jump. I don't recall how effective it works I've... inside the mines. I think the ceiling is lower, and I'm pretty sure the game takes that into consideration with the calculations, which will prevent me from being able to dodge traps using it. The other thing I want to buy right now is insect spray. I noted before... Uh, that this will also work on spiders, and there are giant spiders in the Red Dwarf Mines. But one moment on that. I want to grab Awaken for these two characters. Enjoy. Enjoy. I don't have enough gold to grab my heart's desire here. So I want one person to have a protection from elements, and we're going to say that Zachary. I do have an item which will provide that. But I also want this in a spell form. Enjoy. Right? I want one person to have suppress poison, which in this case is going to be Kalen, which slows the effect of poison on a character, but does not remove the poison condition. We do have five antidotes, but this is a precautionary measure. Enjoy. I will. Thanks. I am going to pick up revitalize with a character. Removes the weak condition from a character. Uh, no creatures in the mines are going to inflict the weak condition. This is just going to be because we've been awake for too fucking long. Uh, it is a minor penalty, but the stuff like that could add up. So I'm going to grab it. Enjoy. And I am going to have both of these characters pick up Cure Wounds. Staying away from attack spells because we've, we've, we're okay. We, we have plenty of attacks. We're on team beatdown. We don't need that stuff right now. Magically cures one character of 15 points of Enjoy. damage. Let's do that. Enjoy. All right, leaves us with 389 bucks. See you later. Today is Five's Day. 35 days into our adventure. Well, I mean, we started on day four. So not that terribly far. Where to? Which tower, please? How many gems do I have? I've got plenty to accomplish what it is I want to do. I see you have the key to this tower. You may pass, Thanks. mortals. There are skulls I left behind on level three. We will be conversing with them now. Feed me. For five gems, I'll teach you the sleep spell. The sleep spell is a sorcerer spell. I'm going to refer to them as sorcerer and cleric spells. Uh, archers have sorcerer spells. Paladins have cleric spells. Uh, it is so sleep is just a sorcerer spell and not a cleric spell. We will pick that up. I may make use out of it or attempted use. Uh, unlike in, say, Might and Magic 1, sleep in this game does not have stellar effects, if memory serves. Something, something completion. Pain is a cleric spell. It is an attack spell. Uh, we will be picking it up. It was discussed 
in the guild, but I can afford to pay the gym price for this. The gold price, not so right now. That's going to change after I clear the Red Dwarf Mines. For five gems, they'll teach you the Beastmaster spell. I do not remember what the fuck this does. This is a cleric spell. Hypnotizes a group of monsters into stillness until they overcome the spell. Object, one group of animals. Cost five spell points and two gems? Maybe I'll try it, he said dubiously. For ten gems, I'll teach you the clairvoyance spell. Absolutely. Our archer is going to be learning clairvoyance. Are you fucking kidding me? We did get an item that does that, and we will be making use of it. Use those items. Ten gems will teach you the Toxic Cloud spell. Toxic Cloud is a sorcerer spell. And then finally, the Lightning Bolt spell, which is also a sorcerer spell and not a cleric or paladin spell. Okay. We've uh, got a lot more spell power at our disposal. Again, a bummer that you cannot access, like, identifying the things here from the screen. That is a... That's a fuck up with the user interface. Unless there is an option to do so, no viewer has helpfully chimed in with that in game. So I feel as if I am correct in that knowledge. Uh, Lightning Bolt, you can see, is our most expensive spell that the archer has. Uh, Lightning Bolt scales up with your level, costing two spell points per level and two gems. Uh, lightning flashes from the caster's hand, electrocuting, electrocuting monsters for four to six points of damage per level of the caster. You target a group of that. That's pretty nifty. Now a, a nice hit. What's the uh, hit point scale on sleep? It, it doesn't say one. Just puts a group of monsters to sleep until they overcome the spell or are damaged. Okay. What about Toxic Cloud? Uh, flat 10 points of poison damage. Mm. I don't think this dungeon's going to be the one for that. I feel as if I remember them having poison... I feel as if the, I remember them having poison resist. Very good, Grimoth. <laughs> Strong. Strong dedication to that. Oh, shit. And then if we take a look at these spells... Pain is a... It's a flat eight points of physical damage to a group. And the Beastmaster hypnotizes a group of animals. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. How long has this all taken me? 13 minutes? All right. No surprise what I figured, particularly given the intro that I did. So it goes. Something, something, Yammer. All right, we'll be walking back to Vertigo now. Uh, I suppose I will grab this Aferno root while I'm here, though. Okay, you dug it up. Thanks. We can admire the edge of the world as we walk past. Also get into some fights, and hey, we can cross water now. Fine, just fine. There was a bottle here. Help! I am in Darzog's tower! Grodo. He found a bottle and he found a way to get the message out. Good for him. A couple of years ago, I built a statue on each of the two islands near here. The statues are supposed to teach spellcasters to cure poison and cure disease spells, but I lost the bone whistle needed to activate them. I think I dropped it somewhere in Pitchfork Creek. <laughs> if you can find my whistle, I will activate the statue. Hey, that sounds like it could be useful to learn cure poison and cure disease. Uh, but we will not be going to do that this episode. There might be a way through this water zone to get to this uh, fountain back here. I don't recall off the top of my head. Yeah, we'll, we'll have some time to be able to enjoy that. Enjoy! A number of uh, viewers heartily enjoying the Guildmaster. What 
this overheal. Hello. Enemies do have trouble getting into the water. So if they don't have a range attack, you're good. Okay. 5 a.m. is when this buff will be dropped, so we'll have some time to enjoy. I didn't talk about the pyramid. Uh, pyramids like these are how we warp to dark side. I do intend to stay away from dark side of Zine until we've chewed through. I don't know whether it's going to be all or most of the stuff that we can access in the clouds. I haven't made up my mind yet. Thanks for the ingredients. I'll make a batch right away. We sell for a nice amount of, of coin. But really, the fact that we'll have some antidotes coming into, like, this dungeon. Now we'll have ten antidote potions. This would be pretty handy. Plenty of poison available for us in there. Let's go. Hello. You don't want any of me orcs. to the action-packed, treasure-filled vines of the Red Dwarf Range. <laughs> the eyes there. <laughs> that individual is on psychedelics. You cannot disabuse me or dissuade me from that notion. Shed some light on the situation, and in we go. thinking about waiting, like actually resting in game to cast Clairvoyance because it's only going to last me a few hours, but eh, it's fine. So, uh, tap a use of it. Let's have our good friends, the Nodding Heads. How about? We may also as well throw down a wizard eye. And we can flip to what we can view with the wizard eye, which is not actually mapped out and then flip to what we've actually mapped out. We'll go this way momentarily. Some giant bat, bat enemies. We'll clean those up pretty nicely. Now, note that pork and beans at 20 strength is not strong enough to open these crates. You need to have a minimum of 21 in order to force these crates open. Uh, which means that Necroloto is going to be the one prying that stuff open. But of course, we already, we could see how the heads felt about the situation. Hello? Money? Prizes? Left head says, it's safe. Right head says, there's nothing of value in there. Same thing here. 2,173 gold. It's a pretty nice haul that covers everyone getting arms master. A habit for me to open stuff with a robber. So it goes. Alright. We've got plenty of stat barrels. Pork and beans. Gonna get some extra might. White liquid is going to be luck. Now, I do know I have a plus 10 luck on Tiny Shopkeeper that could be better served on another character due to diminishing returns, but we're going to have our robber keep that anyway. Vic easily has the lowest luck here, and so we're going to have Vic drink deep. White liquid will also have Vic drink and just a, f a, a barrel of nada. What do you know? It does nada. Red liquid here is going to be Might. And as this is a beatdown group, I want to have everyone get up there in Might. So next up, we're going to take Zachary. The 21. All right. Keep it moving, shall we? This one says it's perfectly fine, but there's nothing in there. Indeed, nothing in the rubble. 
Open that successfully. That's nice. Just run face first into poison. I did not activate my ash resistance. And even just doing that took enough time for the trap to trigger again. Not time, but basically like a turn, which was... Rude and unnecessary, I dare say. Rude and unnecessary. Thankfully, we're pretty damn sturdy. But, uh... Let's go ahead and find this box of elemental protection and use this against acid. Protect ourselves from poison damage. Scribbled on a piece of parchment. A note reads, one bottle orcs milk, two boxes of dwarf biscuits, one can of split toad soup, and one everlasting stick of troll jerky. Well, great. Hello, giant spider. Farewell, giant spider. And a gold vein. Note, the uh, the head shaking there is like, no, it's not safe. But the prizes. The prizes, though. It should be fine. And eventually, it was fine. But, but we did take a lot of damage in that. Thankfully, we have oodles of health. There will be plenty more opportunities like that for me to set my health on fire. The gains will be much greater, though, and worth the uh, risk to HP loss. Deeper in the mines. Then I already encountered cave and stuff is kind of icky. Green liquid is going to be endurance. Uh, I want to take up pork and beans, so let's do that. Green liquid is also going to be endurance. Pork and beans is now at 21. So let's shuffle on over to... Why don't we say tiny shop? Green liquid is going to be that as well. Now our robber has 21 endurance. We're going to focus on the paladins next. Uh, yeah, we'll get that taken care of. Cool. Who searches? Mmm. It's perfectly safe, but there's going to be nothing of value there. Or is there? Not just no treasure, but we could very well find important information for us. Dwarven travel code. Also, hello. How you doing? Welcome to the show. Yellow liquid is accuracy. Only my F5 and F6 keys work for flipping open to these two characters. My F1 through F4 don't work on these four. I think they're being taken over by Basilisk 2. Or maybe in order to access these characters, I have to use some special Microsoft E combinations. Stay away from there. It is a scary place. Right, yellow liquid. I do believe everyone can use accuracy. Slam pork and beans' his head in there. Bam! Purple liquid is going to be speed. I'm pretty sure everyone can be using of speed. That's going to be more purple liquid. Uh, these two are now at 21. So not everyone. Necrolo 2 is already at 21. Uh, next character up, I'm going to say is Vic is a bad shot. Try to get my archer my spellcasting archer to act quicker in initiative. Blue liquid is going to be personality. And that is to handle spellcasting. Both of them are at personality 20. Uh, their next break point is at 21. So, let's go ahead and see that in action, please. You get it, Kalen. If we take a look there, yes. Extra four spell points for us. Huzzah. Yep. Mm. It's fine. Blue liquid is going to be more personality. Let's have you learn that as well. Learn it? Yes. For whatever reason, I'm thinking that there's more than two barrels there. The perspective was fucking with me. It's not my fault. Orange liquid is just going to be going to Vic. And I think that will take care of all of them with the exception of this. And giving this to pork and beans as well. That'll put him up at 21 accuracy. We definitely want him to have some accuracy. Kick this down. 
perfectly fine to search this, but there's nothing in it. Hello. Goodbye. How are we feeling here? The value, the riches. All right. Good stuff. We got a few hours before my castings wear off. This also is a hidden zone. This one doesn't have anything for us. It's either going to be filled with poison or it's going to be filled with three giant spiders. We're going to pass on that front. I don't need to pursue every fight. Or experience. I don't need that kind of completion. We'll have Necroloto engage in mining. Pork and beans made things collapse. <laughs> there we go. We'll keep it working until it no longer does. Taking a look at the map here. That covers this section of the dwarf mines. Uh, but there's still this level to go and many others to pursue here in the dwarf mines. I think I'm going to be stopping the video here. We're about at that time. Scribble on a piece of parchment, a note reads Dwarven Travel Codes. Mine 1, Mine 2, Mine 3, Mine 4, Mine 5. This is our access point Where to? to get teleported on minecart. So, not really teleporting. To uh, the various mine zones. I believe the next one I want to hit up is going to be Mine 3. Uh, because I want to go outside. All the mines have their own like external access ports, we'll call them. <laughs> Surface entrances. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's going to be the one. Then I'll go to mine two, mine four, mine five, and I mean, maybe that'll be it. That's not it. There's going to be so much more. So much more. The mine car doesn't move. Indeed. But there is a little bit more. Nothing of substance in here for us at all. That's why that head was shaking. A flail, a long sword, ring mail, plate mail, wand. Good heavens. Well, I think since I'm almost done with this level, we'll keep the video going long enough for me to finish this level and fight some mad dwarves. And blitz past that loot without even reading it. Empty barrel, empty barrel. Because it's perfectly fine to search. A halberd? It's perfectly fine to search. Some chain mail. Some more mad dwarves. Put them out of their misery. We good? We're good, but there's nothing. We good? Great. Scimitar. How about now? Splint mail. Now? Scale armor. Nothing of value. Search it anyway. Scale armor? That's a no. And ring mail. Okie dokie. So, a dip in River City, Witch Tower, some minor buffage, and we'll know when our buffs expire, because the light's gonna go out, and this gem down here that's representing our elemental protection, because it's lit, uh, will go out too. But really, it's gonna be the light that goes out. But that'll be next episode. Take care, folks. We'll talk to you real soon.